welcome from this magnificent covered bowls complex here at the Royal Oak Bowling Club in Auckland. We're here to give you live coverage of night two of this new televised series called Twilight Bowls League. And those of you who watched it last night will have learned a great deal about this sport if you were new to it. Those of you who are experts will have been able to pick holes in the name players who are here. This event is running over six weeks, so every Tuesday and Wednesday night it's here for your enjoyment. Live coverage of bowls. Eight teams have been chosen to participate. We saw four of them last night. We see the other four tonight. And let me tell you that last night the women prevailed. Amy McElroy and Kirsten Edwards went home absolute grinners because they won the big final against the father and son combination of Logan and Dave Clark. And there were some outstanding shots there last night. We'll see more of those again tonight. Let's have a look at the format for you. It's um, three bowl pairs. Uh, each game is five ends only. There's tie breaks if needed. They play the same direction each end, so that's a bit different for you. And the teams will play two games a night. Who's playing tonight? Let's have a look at those names. Well, we've got a daughter and mother son a combination of Jenny Stockford and Terry Blackburn. Uh, bowls lifers, some guys who've been around for a long time, Peter Shane and Rob Ashton. Teo Turua and Taiki Paniani, uh, who are Cook Island representatives at the World Bowls Championships. And Morris Simon and Briar Atkinson, coach and pupil. They are here tonight. The draw, then, it is Terry and Jenny against Peter and Rob, and Teo and Taiki against Morris and Briar. That's the second game, which will start immediately after the first. The losing teams will play each other, and those that win will also play each other for the major prize. Well, time to get going. Leading the commentary team again tonight is Alex Reid. Thanks, John. I must say I'm uh, looking forward to tonight. We've had our first night of the Twilight Bowls uh, yesterday, and last night I was joined by Joe Edwards in the commentary. Tonight I've got Dave Edwards or Scruff. Uh, what do you think we can expect to see from this game, Dave? Well, strap yourselves in, folks, because I'm looking forward to this. This is, you know, this five-end format. Look, it's over before you blink. So, um, <laughs> you know, there can be no dilly-dallying around from these players. They're going to have to get on, on the ball quickly. And uh, no doubt they would have had a bit of a practice on the rink to get used to it. Let, let's hope they can get into their work quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I think they both all, both teams have been out here practicing earlier on today at Royal Oak <laughs> Bowling Club. And uh, Rob looking happy with that as his first, as his first bowl. Rob Ashton, of course, been around the around the bowl scene for a huge number of years. I've been involved in the game for a long time, and he started before me. So, um, <laughs> yep, he's been around for a long time. Oh, he said it's only only won. 37 years for Rob, Rob Ashton. <laughs> only, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the stat. So, if this is the first time you've watched the game. It's a, well, it, it comes across as a pretty simple one. You try and get one of your bowls as close as you can to the little white ball, uh, which we've placed in the middle of some circles of a target area. Uh, so, yeah, it seems simple, and uh, what makes it challenging is not only the people playing it, but the fact that the bowls turn, so it's not a straight line. You have to roll your bowl out in a direction. It's always going to come back in to get as close as you can to the white ball, and uh, at the end of this end, we'll explain how the point system works, Dave. Yep, so um, the more of your bowls that you can get closer to the jack, as we call it, or the kitty, uh, before you, 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 your opponent's nearest one, they all count. And look, it's it's a pretty good start here from Jenny. She's, uh, whilst not having thing, anything really, really close, uh, she's holding three shots at the moment. Yeah, there or thereabouts. I think this is uh, Jenny's 12th or 13th year playing outdoor bowls. She's from a bowls family. Her mum and dad played, and that's a story we hear a lot as we see Rob Ashton here. Oh, just that agonising bowl wide. It's a bit of pressure on this first end, Dave. A bit of pressure on Peter Sane. Definitely three down. He's still got plenty of room, though, so I'm sure he won't be stressing too much. But, <laughs> yeah, look, um, fantastic. Uh, it's amazing that we've got a, a mother and daughter playing here tonight, but Boy, oh boy, that is so common around the country that we've got lots and lots of people, family groups who play a lot together in, the, in this great sport of ours. So um, as we keep stressing, it's just a sport for anyone at, and um, right from young teenagers till, till to, to grand, grandparents, it's um, anyone can play the game. And 
here's a great starter here from uh, from Terry. Yeah, good first bowl. Uh, Eagle-eyed viewers may recognise Terry. She's uh, went to the World Championships and skipped the winning para pairs combination. So she's won a gold medal at a world a world championship in the para pairs. Only her fifth season of outdoor bowls. She played as a teenager and then uh, gave the game away for a little bit and has recently come back. As we see Peter Shane, this is his first bowl. Oh, has he done it? Maybe. What do you reckon, Dave? He's, I, I think he's still down, but he's definitely cut a fair few of the, a fair few out. He's, he's possibly only one down. And um, yeah, what a, what a mag magnificent achievement for Terry Blackburn when she partnered Julie O'Connell to win that um, World Championship in the Gold Coast recently in the para sport category. As we see another pretty good effort here from Terry, and that's fallen in, and that'll count. So it's definitely two. Peter here looking very serious. He's had the same delivery. There's a video somewhere when he won his first New Zealand singles title in the in the early 90s. Delivery has stayed pretty much the same for 25, 30 years. And can I say, as a coach, for putting the coach's hat on, it's a very, very good delivery too, my word of this. Absolutely is. I think he's got my favourite backhand runner. Uh, Dave, if I was to pick one, I think it's probably the most accurate backhand runner in general. Oh, Terry, she's, that's an interesting, that's uh, the face picture tells a thousand words. <laughs> and we saw a thousand there, I don't think she liked it very much. No, she didn't, she knew straight away that she was a bit narrow. She had pretty good speed again, just didn't take enough green. So Rob seems to think they're three down. Very, very good line last time from Peter Sane. All he needs to do is put a metre of weight onto it and he should be pretty close. Oh, he's not looking 100% confident here either. Oh, he's cut dear. his green as well. Well, we'll see. He's kicked one out. Two. Kicked two out. Two and a half. Oh, we're going to get to see Sue Rossiter with her measures. An intriguing start here. I mean, it's the, the the first week we've had of this Twilight Bowls League, and it's the players' first night, so it's understandable. I mean, there will be there will be some nerves, and we've spoken about Peter and Rob. They've played uh, uh, bowls for a while. I think um, their combined bowling career they're pushing on. I won't say it, but it's in the multiple decades. Uh, but it's a different beast, isn't it? Playing on television, Dave. It just feels it's hard to explain, but it it does feel a bit different. Yep, it's obviously, you know, you, we, you play bowls a lot uh, without cameras around you uh, and you've just got your mates and your, and your teammates and you're playing, um, absorbing yourself in the game and all of a sudden you get to the end there's, and there's, there's this, this, this big cameras around, there's the, uh, the screen set up specifically for a TV rink and uh, and hence, uh, yeah, there will be early nerves definitely for everyone involved in this match out here. No two ways about it. Goodness, I just love that bowl scoop, Dave. Look at it go. Look at it go. And we'll talk. We've got all night to talk about it. But uh, last night, Joe named it a bowl scooper upper, which I thought was a really interesting call. <laughs> so, so I think I think between us, we can come up with an alternate an alternate name and see what the. Um, the general public thinks of it by the time we get to the end of this Twilight Bowls League. Does a great job mate. with with the player. This is this is another unusual feature about tonight's format. Of course, is the fact that the the players are playing in just the one direction. Mm. Normally, when we play the game out outside, normally you play up one end and you, the bowls stay that end, and you play from where the bowls are up to the other end, and you walk up and down. So, uh, this is another added feature of of the format of this particular event, having players playing from the same direction right throughout the five ends of the game. It certainly is, uh, the, the logic and being to just make it as simple as we can, Dave. Absolutely, and what it also does means that the players are rotating their positions. So the players, even though the bowls get taken back up the other end, the players stay where they are. So now, of course, Terry, as she delivers her, first, her second bowl here, she was 
uh, skipping the first end of the game. Well, now she's leading in the second end. So this is another brilliant feature of the format that we've got here tonight and another brilliant feature of a lot of the Twilight Leagues that we have around the country as well. Absolutely. So that you get to experience the early bowls in the head and then also have a go at skipping the game as well. Peter Shane on his forehand side. Steering it down, he's not far away, Dave. Now, the uh, circles that you see, the stickers on the green, uh, John Macbeth, the host, so, yeah, a little bell going in the background, John Macbeth, the host, went down earlier on today and put as many bowls as he could from the middle of the circle to the outside, and we figured you can fit about three and a half bowls between the jack, which is the white ball, and the outside of the circle, so, I mean, it might look like it's a, a pretty big space to draw in, if you get a bowl in the circles, as we're about to see here from Terry, it's a very good bowl, isn't it? What an outstanding bowl there. Two down, playing her last bowl. And gets you got another one under over. there. See that far over your first. Excellent bowl. Excellent bowl. Peter Shane on the forehand. Steering it down. Of course, these two, this Peter Shane and Rob Ash in combination, have won the New Zealand pairs together in 2015. One of Peter Shane's, I think he's on six or it might be five open national titles. He's got a gold star. So they've had no uh, lack of pairs, pairs play together. Peter, also an excellent exponent in the singles um, discipline of our sport as well. Very, very good singles player, Peter. That was his uh, real forte. And Rob, actually, himself, um, was also played representative uh, for the Wellington Centre. He was player for quite a number of years as well. We see Jenny Stockford try to add a bowl in here. Oh, not the end of the world. They're holding one. Hasn't made the target any bigger here. For Rob, so it looks like he's on his backhand, which is to the right of his head. Is he going for a bit of aggression here? Hard to well, tell. Yeah, he is. He could yep. get a good result. Oh, goodness gracious me. He had We're, two seconds. Yeah. The only concern I would have there is the two seconds are sitting right beside each other. So if he happened to run into them, he's possibly going to uh, take both of his own second shots out. But obviously, that's not what he's aiming for. He's aiming to eliminate that, uh, get rid of that white bowl that's currently holding the shot. And uh, he was just um, a little bit unfortunate to run into a short bowl. Good. What do you do? More guts on the forehand. More guts. forehand. <laughs> oh, I love it. So he's been asked to, to hit it pretty hard, I think, uh, Dave, on the forehand side here. High, wide and handsome, that one. Nowhere near the target. <laughs> well, from the skips on the, the second end. Jenny will be desperately keen to try and get another bowl on the head here. Doesn't want to, if her bowl disappears, then they'd be two down. But it looks like yeah. she's going to pull up short here. Oh, Still there, mate. He's not going to be short, is he? You chip that bowl out, it's worth two points. Could get a miracle and get rid of the back white for three. Rob Ashton, second end. It's only five ends this game. Big moment. He's close here. Rob Ashton, he's close. Needs it to turn. Oh, beautiful effort. Great try. One. Just about got second prize, which was the jack. If he'd got the jack, it probably would have killed. And uh, with them having the back pole, it would have been uh, would have been an okay result for them as well. But the girls are leading 4-0 after two ends now. As we see uh, our little bowls machine in action again. Yeah, Ben the bowls uh, scooper upper operator. That's a lot of <laughs> syllables there, isn't it? That's <laughs> probably too many syllables there. Oh, goodness, it does a great job. And thank you to the Cambridge Bowling Club who graciously have lent us this this bowls device for the duration of the league. Recently celebrated their 125th anniversary. The the Cambridge Bowling Club, which is a, a very impressive effort for a, a, a lawn bowls club. It's been around for some time. Yeah, about 10 metres behind it, yeah. 
looks to be a pretty handy opener from Jenny as well. It is. It's going to go oh. through. Oh, it went through a bit further than I thought, actually. <laughs> it, it was in the circles briefly, wasn't it? Like it passed. <laughs> it passed through the circles. Rob Ashton here. So he's been playing this game for 37 years. Before he came to New Zealand, he played uh, football for Rochdale in the English League and then followed that career with uh, a bit of crown green bowls, which is like, um, I won't explain it, but it's like a common ancestor to lawn bowls. It's sort of uh, the same but different, isn't it, Dave? And it's an unbelievable game, that crown green bowls. I, yeah, the game's challenging enough as it is, as you can see tonight. It's a very, very challenging sport. And uh, they, add, they add a mound, a crown, yeah. in the green to make it even more tricky. Because it wasn't hard uh, enough yeah, already. <laughs> You're dead right, you're dead right. Now the boys really need to score this end. They wouldn't want to drop a, another... Well, they, wouldn't, they really need to score this end just to give themselves some confidence and give them a chance with, with, with the uh, next, two, next two ends to try and eke out a victory here. So they really need to be scoring on this end. There's only yeah, that five-end game. You know, blink and you miss it. So it's whoever gets out of the blocks the quickest is going to be successful I think it probably encourages um, if there's a bowl on Dave if you can play a shot that's a bit risky but it's worth the number it's it's almost worthwhile playing it in this format isn't it taking those risks absolutely funnily enough in the out in, a, in our normal version of a game like the, where the ends there's a lot more ends to play with one of the things we coach a lot is patience. Ah. To be patient and wait for your opportunity to uh, to bounce and perhaps get a number. But you can't do that no. in this format. <laughs> Five inch, she's all over. So no pace, you've got to get in there. And the girls did it brilliantly on the first end, picking up that three. You know, if you're too patient, you're blinking. The game will be over. <laughs> that would be no good yeah, in this right. 5 So like you said, if we look at that score at the top left, it's... Four points to Terry and Jenny, no points to Peter and Rob, so really important on this third end that Peter and Rob find a way to score. Peter has ambitions for his grandchildren to to uh, continue with the sport of lawn bowls. He says they've all got the talent to be very, very successful, and uh, knowing uh, Peter's ability as I do, I don't find that surprising at all. Bowling bowl here from Terry. Very good. That's the shot itself. They might even be holding two, but that's definitely the shot. Steering after this one, Peter saying. So Terry, as we mentioned, um, winning that world championship para sport uh, bowls title on the Gold mm -hmm. Coast just recently and yeah real interesting story around rheumatoid arthritis is the issue yes. for Terry and she she has um, has had that basically since she was a youngster and it um, can be very very yeah, debilitating mate. on occasions for her yours. so that far behind and she's a, with her it's, yeah it's been amazing really so she was um diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis so uh, literally since she could walk and uh, try to handle a number of sports but settled on indoor bowls Dave and uh, had an incredible career at that sport she's won four open national indoor bowls titles as we see Peter Shane that's a great shot and played for her country in the uh, in the open team and is now blowing her hand in the outdoor game has won that world championship <laughs> it's good to see in the background uh, Rob saying well where's the clapping for that bowl but uh, Absolutely an inspiration, and like we said and have said again and again, and we'll continue to say for five weeks, anyone can play the game. Anyone can play bowls. It's a diverse range of people. Uh, we can all do it. It's a great, a great sport. Yeah, make it two, mate. Absolutely. What if I touch, that is if the, I touch his white ball, uh, amazing and fantastic the white ball, is it worth anything? Any it's age, up, any right disability. Up. You know, we've got a very, very strong blind bowls community in New Zealand as well um, and then you know obviously heaps of opportunities for able-bodied players no two ways about that but it's great that the sport can cater for anyone mm -hmm. it's 
great to have the commentary from the players too. You can see they're mic'd up, so uh, Peter and Rob are not known to be short of a word. <laughs> Good to get that insight. So we see on this end, they've scored the one point. They desperately needed to do that now. Let's see if they can capitalise. Still three behind, but at least they're on the board, and uh, that'll give them a bit of confidence going into these last two games. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, so Twilight Bowls, fantastic opportunity all around the country. There are heaps and heaps of clubs that run Twilight Bowls competitions, and it's a great it's a great introduction to the sport. In fact, um, Joe, the wife, my lovely wife, Joe, that was how she got into the sport initially was giving it giving it a go at a Twilight uh, Bowls league here in Nelson. Uh, down in Nelson and, she, and that's how she started the game and then went on to become a world champion so it's and it's such a friendly laid-back relaxed way to get involved in the game roll along to your roll along what a great well, pun there <laughs> roll along to your nearest club and have a chat to them and uh, oh. welcome you with open arms as we see a very very good opener there from Peter Say. A great start yeah and a, a good way to find uh your local bowls club if you just google bowls new zealand or go to our website bowlsnewzealand.co.nz uh, there is a find a club feature there it's got a page for all 467 or so bowling clubs in new zealand it outlines uh, contact details and what they offer in terms of twilight bowls and as you said dave hundreds of clubs in new zealand run a twilight bowls league uh, during the summer months it's um, uh, relaxed friendly you play a few ends uh, get watered and fed it's a great time and i would highly recommend it again um as you said it's where we find a lot of people start their careers some people spend their entire bowling lives uh, at twilight bowls and that's fine you know it's a good way to spend some time with your mates on the summer months that was the other thing i was going to stress alex and you touched on it there you can play whatever amount of bowls you want to if just one one night a week at twilight bowls is your go brilliant go for goal but also the opportunity to get if you get fully immersed in the game find it hugely challenging want to really give it a go then you can and that relates to any age once again we've got secondary school competitions around the country under 26 competitions and the, and you know so just yeah look you can pick and choose how much you want to get involved in the sport that's another real advantage of it for sure and Peter Shane staring after this ball look at this ball turn so all the players if you're if you're a bowler and you're tuning in you might be thinking oh what a coincidence that all the players have the exact same colored bowls it's because it's not their personal set that's been provided they're all Aero Optimus and the Aero Optima has a, a nice a nice arc to it quite a big turning bowl so it's well suited uh, to this carpet green and once the bowls start turning uh, they don't really stop so you'll see that a lot over the next six weeks this bowl is a good example it just turns across the head at that almost 90 degree angle for the last little bit of running <laughs> okay we see the players crossing over here now and the boys uh, peter sane has played this head exceptionally well got a touch with his first bowl and then he he added another shot uh, so holding two at the moment so uh, Jeannie will be wanting to uh, try and reduce the count here or even get the shot herself to maintain the advantage that they hold at the moment, leading by four shots to one. Uh, drop a couple here and it's game on for the last in. Yeah, big pressure on this bowl. Or the next one, sorry, although the first bowl of the skip, we talk about that a lot, don't we? Um, David, we just talk a little bit about bowls theory at six bowl pairs. So the last bowl of the lead and the first bowl of the skip uh, vitally important uh, bowls to ensure that they're effective it's where you can add position as Rob is about to do here with this great shot or it's where you can salvage a, a bad head and that was a very good bowl there for Bob Ashton well that is a ripper of a bowl because it's made it incredibly difficult now for Jenny to she can't see the jack it's hidden around that always makes it just a little bit more tricky to to get the feel of the speed when you can't absolutely see the jack but and he's tucked it around the corner made three of it so Jenny's gonna have to uh, she's got a pretty good line here and she'll be happy with that line and know that she's got the right line just needs to add some more speed to it with her next bowl yeah it's about just uh, keeping your cool and making your correction 
I've noticed Rob, uh, when I've seen him play, if he claps after his pole, it's usually pretty good, Dave. That's usually an indication that he thinks it's come out nice. And look at this. Look at this. Beautiful yep. bowl. Pretty good. Yep. Four shots are holding there now. Jenny, Black, Jenny Stockford's got two opportunities to try and cut this back, and here's the first one on its way now. She'll be feeling a little bit of pressure here. Four down. She's close. She's close here. Jenny Stockford. When's it going to turn? Is it going to turn in time? Is it going to stop? What happened? Oh, just kept going. I thought she had that really good, Dave. Well, Rob's really loving this one. He's trotting <laughs> after it. Come on. Get with this here, right? Wide, throwing it out a little bit wider so that one probably won't be in the count but looks like it's four down huge pressure on Jenny Stockford not much of a correction to be made her last ball she played is hidden at sort of eight o'clock to the jack on that previous camera angle so not a huge correction here eh Dave you just sort of let it go think I'll do a similar thing Please come so back. Your last ball here. She's close. Like here. She's close again here. She's real. Look close. at this. Look at this from Jenny Stockford. She's drawn a touch up. What, what have I just witnessed? One white. Goodness gracious me. That was actually almost. I would go as far as to say that one of the match. Because that one has put them 5-1 up now. I hope I haven't made an early call for them there, but what a fantastic bowl that was. Four <laughs> down, drew an absoluta with their last bowl. What a fantastic bowl. And now 5-1 up playing the last end. That was staggeringly. That's staggering good. And you talk about you talk about pressure in a in any sporting situation. That's as much pressure as you can be under. You know, Jenny Stockford, they were 4-1 up, feeling okay, suddenly 4 down, you've got one ball in your hand left to salvage the situation, you're on national television for uh, one of the first times on the first night of or second night of this event, what a shot, what a shot. Oh, look, look at this one, it's like shelling peas for her, she's drawn <laughs> another one to start the next end, so. Easy apparently. Tell you what, that if, you, if, if we're doing highlights packages later on, you only need to shave one bowl over and over and over again, Alex, because and that that would have been a, that last bowl from Jenny, fantastic. Oh, just a great shot. And now, uh, I, I <laughs> if I was Jenny, I'd have it on repeat. <laughs> That's the sort of bowl that you visualise, isn't it? You know, you think about, you dream about playing those shots under pressure, and once you've done it once, the next time you're in that situation, you think to yourself, well, you know, I've done this before. I know how it feels to execute this uh, so oh, just a great great example of how bowls can uh, sort of toss and turn a little bit there Dave and uh, just a yeah, brilliant bowl as you said so you need four and you're Peter and Rob what what's the strategy how do you find four points here what's the what's the plan yeah well it's it's getting more and more difficult with these first two bowls of Rob the first thing that one's not too bad, it's come it's come reasonably handy, but the first thing is you don't want to be dropping any short bowls because they're out of play. So you need to be at making sure that you're reaching the head here, and um, if you happen to pick the jack up on the way past, that's a bonus. You, you want to be making sure that you're past, giving yourself the chance, if you need to at a later stage in the head, to, to trail the jack to your bowls out the back. So drawing the shot or past is what... Uh, Rob should have been looking to do I with his up. three bowls. If he's got the weight right, he should be okay here. That's a handy bowl. That's exactly what you were talking about there, Dave. So it's a bowl that's past the jack. So that's the white ball that's in the middle of your screen. If it gets moved backwards, that's good stuff. So Peter Sane will be thinking, well, four is possible. I've got three bowls to play. There's a bowl a little bit past the jack that I could potentially move it to. And uh, he's going to need to be effective with all three bowls here. Or are we going to see Terry and Jenny go through to that championship final later on tonight? You're absolutely right. Peter, because he, he's going to have to play three very, very good bowls. But 
first thing that Terry should be looking to do here is cover that back bowl mm. of, uh, of of Rob Ashton's, the last bowl that he played. If, he, if she can arrive to sort of round about that same area, and she's fallen just a little bit short. So still the opportunity for Peter Sane to get the four if, if he can play three tracking bowls. I must say, um, I'm very impressed with Peter Sane's uh, colour coordination, Dave. You've got the white shoes, the white belt, the white piping on the shirt. Looks very smart at this Twilight Bowls League. And he's playing pretty good Not bowls too. Often. This is... Oh, well played. Very well played. So that's another one that, that if he trails the jack, he's got another... That's another very good home where he's put his first bowl. That would count if he was able to trail, trail the jack by a couple of three feet. So you just heard... Jenny there telling Terry to make sure that you just, you know, make sure you arrive. Doesn't matter if you pick it up yourself, it's make sure you get here. And this is a much better bowl, although it might go a little bit too far it's this time. Right, yeah, there's still that scoring area, isn't there? Sort of at the bottom of that, uh, the bottom of that circle, the target area. If he can get the white ball, the jack down to the bottom of that target area, they'll be holding three. He's capable of playing the shot, Peter's saying. He's given himself every chance. How's he await? Oh, he's he pulling can... up short. Oh. He's pulled up short. Now things are a bit more difficult for them. The only thing now, we'll have to have a look at the head now to see whether those, they might be holding three seconds. Mm. So obviously Jenny's got the shot with her bowl that's on the mat there at the moment. But if it's the only bowl there, the other... He may have another option to try and get the four that they need here. Oh, interesting. So there's actually, there is a shot, potentially. Oh, your ball through the kitty by that much. Push it up. Oh, throw him right up to it. Turn, turn the ball onto the kitty. Yeah. Yours will come through with it. So, well, it's self-explanatory, isn't it? That's what Robbie Robbie's just asked for. Through... Peter's own bowl, got to move the white ball for Jack and follow through yourself. It's on in theory. It is on in theory. Very, very difficult shot because you've got to get the speed 100% correct. And he, he had so probably played it there. a little bit too much speed there. Yep. So shake hands time. And there we have it. Congratulations to... Terry Blackbourne and Jenny Stockford for making their way through to the championship final of this night two of the Twilight Bowls League. Don't go anywhere though folks if you're watching there's still three more games to go and after this ad break we'll be back with the next one. And welcome back to the Twilight Bowls League. We've just seen Terry and Jenny make their way through to the major final. And uh, we're going to watch the next game, Dave. Tio and Taiki taking on Morris and Briar shortly. What are your predictions for that match? What do you think is going to happen? This is going to be a little ripper, actually, because we've got, um, 
we've got the the old stager Morrison. I'm sure he won't mind me calling him that. Morrison has been <laughs> playing bowls. He played for New Zealand years and years ago. Uh, been playing the game for a number of years, and he's got uh, Briar Atkinson playing with him. And Briar, this is a, a coach and pupil uh, comp combination. Uh, and Briar is a very very promising up and coming player. And then we've got the two guys. Now these two guys have both been to the recent World Bowls Championships yes. for the, yep. representing the Cook Islands. Um, so two very very tasty teams here. I'm I'm sitting on the fence. I'm afraid. <laughs> You're sitting on the fence, Dave. That's not fair. That's no fun. And I was going to sit <laughs> on the fence as well. So we both agree with each other. It will be an interesting matchup. I think uh, the five ends. I would expect to see Tio. Tio is one of the more aggressive bowlers out there, and Taiki has won a, a Commonwealth Games bronze medal in the pairs, of course, playing with Aiden Zitterstein and skipping. I would expect to see some real aggression from them in these in these five ends. I'd be surprised if they haven't had that sort of conversation. Would you agree with that, Dave, or do you do you uh, take an alternate view? Well, I think you've got to be. You, you have to be positive in this game. As I said earlier on, there's no there's no chance, no time really to rest on your laurels and take your time and and be patient in this game. There's only five in, so you've got to get into it early. And um, so yes, being aggressive, being positive uh, early in the game. Yep, I think um, yeah, you, you're dead right. I think that's the way to go. Here he is, Taiki. He's won a Commonwealth Games bronze medal. He doesn't look super duper thrilled with that bolt. And again, last night we saw the sunglasses on the hat from Amy McElroy and Kirsten Edwards, and Tyke's obviously seen that and thought, well, why, why don't I follow suit? Now we saw in the very in the first game, of course, that um, the first end was a crucial one in the context of that match because the girls got out to a, a three 0 lead on that first end, and it was a pretty loose end, and the three shots weren't super close, but um, we'll. Let's hope uh, that, uh, that, that that it's not quite so widespread the first end of this game. And already we've got a couple of handy bowls. Taiki here on the forehand again. Good second bowl. Handy openers. Yeah, pretty handy openers. Briar, before the the camera's roll, was saying she's a bit nervous, uh, Dave. It's the first time she's been on Sky TV as she draws a toucher. I don't, I don't, I don't know what she was worried about. What a great shot that is. She ain't showing many nerves, is she? No, look, that's uh, and that's to be expected. And look, I, if I was talking to her, I'd be saying, well, I'd be very surprised if you weren't nervous. So uh, nothing wrong with that. But she settled into her work pretty pretty quickly. Her coach, um, Morris Symes, at the other end of the rink. So both playing out of the Taranaki region. But Briar won the New Zealand Champion of Champions singles earlier this year. Uh, so that was a great... great um, shot. First sort of tick off in her career. That was a that was a very good bowl. I glanced away and I've looked back and Briar's bowls disappeared. <laughs> so, as I said, off pretty well. Take a set it set it fair and square. Set it off. So Briar just underneath the line there. See some uh, T.O. plays out of the Bridge Park Club in Auckland. I can see some of his club mates in the back here to support him. Of course, if you want to come down to the Royal Oak Bowling Club, uh, you're welcome to do so Tuesday and Wednesday nights from 6.30. And I, I have a and good authority, Dave, um, and by good authority I mean John Macbeth, who's the, the host. He told me uh, Taiki and Tio have not practiced. They didn't they didn't practice today, so they've come in cold to this rink. And I mean, you couldn't tell by the way Taiki started, could you? You did right quickly into his work. Yep. So uh, holding three shots at the moment. 
even though Morris's first ball was a bit heavy there and he, he sailed quite a distance through, it's it's not a bad opener because he can mm. now make the adjustment. He's got his line pretty pretty well uh, and it's better to, to be up with your first bowl most definitely. See if he can make the adjustment now. On the back end, got a lovely delivery as well, Morris Symes. Again, he's another one. He's been on the bowling scene for some time from a bowling family. His, his mum was a very good bowler. She was another M. Symes too. So when you look back through the, the archives, there's lots of M. Symes sort of scattered through. A uh, very good bowler she was. So uh, Morris, I think, started off in Taranaki. He's moved around back there now. And he won the Taranaki Champ Champ singles uh, last year, I believe. And I'm sure he had won that at some other stage and there was some ridiculous amount of time between those two <laughs> Dave the two wins he had had well, he's been playing for over 50 years I believe and Morris is, is a real stalwart of the game very very well known around the country uh, as you said he, he has played in a, uh, a, a number of different centres as we call it as we watch this great bowl here from Morris Times what a shot was the shot when he was a few down He said he started playing the game, so although he's from a family of, of bowlers, he started playing the game uh, because he had a, an injury and was given clearance to play the croquet or bowls. So we saw on that first end, what did we see there, Dave, a score? Well, Morris drew it with his last bowl, so Morris got the, the Morris and Briar have started with one shot to get the game underway. And it was a great bowl from Morris too, as I said. Three down, under a little bit of pressure, first end, and drew the shot cold. Great I bowl from the, the old stager. One of the beauties of this format is Morris has just played an absolute bomb, and in a normal game, you'd have to wait a, an entire end to play again. And he's proven me wrong because he's fallen short there, but my point is you get to play six bowls in a row, so you can play an absolutely magnificent shot to, to win an end, and then you get to play a bowl again while you're still riding that high, and that's fresh in your memory. Absolutely. And just um, a very, very good opener here. Great Excellent shot. bowl, that one. Talking a little bit more about Morris, uh, Morris is um, a renowned greenkeeper as well. For um, uh, you know, tonight we're playing on an artificial surface, but a lot of the greens in New Zealand are still the grass or weed greens that need to be uh, looked after with tender, loving care by mm. uh, greenkeepers. And Morris, um, very, very strong in that area, and also administratively for greenkeepers as well. I believe he's. Um, uh, does a, a tremendous amount of work in the background as an administrator for the, the Greenkeepers Association. So, so to the sport in a, in a lot of different ways, Morris, he's a real stalwart of the game. Absolutely, absolutely is. And still playing top bowls. Won the New Zealand Fours a couple of years ago, skipping. He said, oh, I can lip read, I'm pretty sure he said that was too fast. Uh, so we'll watch and see if he knows. And uh, there you go, you see that bowl. Just too fast, so he picked that one well, Morris. Beautiful green, but just slightly overplayed. And Tio on his forehand, very talented, and uh, you don't need a degree in communication to realise that he doesn't think that bowl is very good. He's played two little rippers, though. He's got two very, very good shots there. They haven't given up on this one either <laughs> yet, but... Um, I'd be happy. <laughs> yes. That's, that's close enough. So you look at that head, Dave, for Briar. What's her? What should she be doing here? What would you say is, is her best shot? She, well, once again, with her first bowl, I'd be making sure that she she definitely gets here. So playing playing on the forehand, looking just to draw, but making sure you don't fall short. Definitely get here. If you get to the jack, that's good because Morris's bowl just behind the head is waiting uh, in a good home. So just a confident draw on the forehand, which is what she's uh, played here. Very close, very talented bowler. Morris said uh, they've not played pairs together before, but he's been her coach for a couple of years on the recommendation of um, uh, Mike Kernahan and uh, certainly has been successful period for Briar having won the, the champion champion singles. But it must be cool to, to get the opportunity to play a game of pairs together, 
uh, Dave, having um, uh, coached her for a season or two? Absolutely, yes, and that's another to the bow of Morris as well. He's He is a very well-recognised, good coach of the sport as well. So um, Briar's definitely in good hands there with uh, the ability that uh, and, and all the knowledge that uh, Morris can pass on to her. She Now, she didn't play too bad a bowl with her first bowl. It's just a matter of now whether they look to change hands. Things have got a little bit cluttered on that forehand. Morris having a good look at the head, obviously, mm. and Briar waiting for some instructions. So it'll be it'll be interesting because we've spoken that the um, the skip in the lead change alternately in this game. She's hitting it. Down she comes. Oh, what a ball! It's gone back up the rink. The jack's gone back up the rink. <laughs> I don't understand what I've just witnessed. I think she was half that a ball one. wide, but a miracle. Goodness gracious me! That is something that happens. Very, very rarely in our sport where the jack does actually go back up the rink a little bit. Uh, we always talk about having back bowls in because the jack always normally only goes in one direction. But yep, but she was in the area. She got a great result, but she was in the area, and and you can't deny that she got a little bit of luck with it. But she had a two or three bowl target, hit any one of the bowls, and she did, and got a, a very, very good result. So holding one after that magnificent shot and now just uh you have to take a deep breath the adrenaline's rushing you take a deep breath and they go oh, just go back to the draw on the forehand and oh, i'm not sure i'm not sure at least she's smiling that's good what's happening no a fair enough too much speed on yep she uh hadn't made the adjustment from having a drive with her middle bowl she was um far too much weight with that last bowl so Taiki here, I mean, he's to play a good shot. I think it's important oh. in those first two ends to try and score a point. Uh, what do we think? Is he close? How's his weight? Needs it to go. Oh, oh, he had a good line. He just needed it. Another couple of feet of running. Agonizingly short there. But we're going to see another point scored by Morrison Bryant. So 2-0 after 2. Oh, we've got a new bowls scoop operator. Broom, bowls broom, bowls. What else? What else could we call oh, it, Dave? Golden retriever. A golden retriever. Remind, I like it. Reminds me of, you know, how you throw the throw the ball for your dog to go and get it and bring it back. Well, look, yeah. So, yeah, golden retriever. Golden there you retriever. go. That'll work. There's been a few suggestions. We asked the world uh, what we should call this this bowls device they're common in other parts of the world but not so common in New Zealand um, and again our thanks go to the Cambridge Bowling Club who've who've lent us this this device for the duration of the league bowls sweeper was one suggestion bowls roller super scooper pram rake uh, so on and so forth so it appears to be an absolute plethora of ideas is what we could uh, what we could call it and we've got five more weeks to figure it out Dave but um, Golden Retriever, the Bowls Retriever. Yeah, I, I, I don't mind that. I like that as a call. I think we need to come up with a prize for the... We need to make a decision at the end of the six weeks and come up with a prize for the lucky person that... Yeah. That, whose name we decide on, I, I think. I'll leave that in your tender loving care, shall why, I? Why not? Is it because you're really confident at it being uh, called the Retriever, no, no, Dave? I, <laughs> no, count me out. Count me out. <laughs> oh, fair enough. So 2-0 in this game, 2-0 after two ends, and remembering the way this works, this Twilight Bowls League, we're going for five more weeks, every night is a new event, so every night we find a new champion pairs team, so tonight no exception, we know that Terry and Jenny have made their way through to the, to the final for tonight, and this game is to decide who plays them, and we'll also figure out who finishes third and who finishes fourth uh, next as well, so Peter and Rob will take on the loser of these two teams. So a great night of bowls ahead. We're not even halfway. Just struggling a little bit with his speed there. One dropping quite a long way short and that one going charging through. So <laughs> You can see, I think um, Briar, I mean, she's playing really well. But it will be a new experience for her, and she knew the moment she let go of that bowl that it wasn't going to be uh, quite the weight of the green there, Dave. But the first two, good enough, so she won't be too unhappy, I don't think. 
got two good handy bowls here. And what I liked is she knew she'd made a blunder there, but she didn't get down on herself. There was a smile on her face, even though she had delivered a pretty ordinary bowl by her standards. Um, it's no good. It's no good dwelling on it. Move on as quickly as you can and just concentrate on the next one. So good to see her have a smile on her face there. Absolutely, and the pressure on really. I mean, five ends. You blink and you miss it. Morris and Briar, they're two 0 up after two ends, uh, but holding the shots on the head, the pressure, it'll feel more than it looks for Tio and Taiki, I think, Dave. Yeah, they, they, you know, once again, they'll want to score this end. They'll want mm. to just have the confidence of, of seeing a number beside their name on the scoreboard. So, I'll be wanting to make sure uh, they get on the board this game, so, uh, this end. So, and Tio this game. will be wanting. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, this game. Tio will be wanting to um, play a good one with his first bowl here, try and relieve the pressure a little bit by playing it with his first bowl. And it is down to that first bowl now, isn't it? Because if you look at that, the circles, there should be room to draw the shot here. If he does it with his first, he can make a multiple happen. If he misses his first bowl, the pressure will just build and build and build here. As he steers that bowl down, waits for it to come back into the head. Well... Oh, it just flopped around. It, oh, he might still be one down, but it, he was a bit unlucky. It looked like it was almost going to fall in off that shot, bowl four shot itself, but I think he might still be one down. But good bowl that last one. He'll know that he can play pretty much exactly the same bowl with his next one, and he should get the shot. Morris showing his displeasure at that bowl. Tyke just checking having a quick look with his fingers here to see who who he thinks might have the shot it's obviously pretty close he's a draw he's not sure <laughs> yes so of course if the players can't decide they call an umpire and bowls and our umpires don't do anything silly like give out yellow or red cards dave they just decide uh, <laughs> they decide whether um you're holding the shot or you're not and that's uh, sue rossiter's job tonight is it too soon to make the um the cards or probably probably is too soon i think sorry team the Stoke Bowling Club certainly uh, we were there um, uh, when the when it happened on on Sunday, and uh, I would call it deflated, <laughs> deflated space to be in. Well, that's okay. The bowls was great, and they go again this weekend at the Stoke Bowling Club in Nelson with the men's version of the Stoke Stakes. Uh, we had the ladies last week, and very very good field for the men's uh, competition this weekend. Yes, and the Nelson Fours as well. So it's a, an incredible amount of high-quality bowls in that you know, Nelson area, Dave, over the sort of two- or three-week period. Absolutely, yep. So Tio on the backhand. Oh, I'm not sure. He's not happy with it. He could get a miracle. That's not a miracle. That's the opposite of a miracle. That's a... Re that's a Goodness, I wouldn't buy a lot of ticket. You've lost all your luck, and it's not going to come back anytime He's soon. That's a three. How did that happen? Well, he, got, he was unlucky. He got a slide off the front bowl, which which meant it changed the direction of his bowl onto his own one and rolled it off the head, and his his bowl also went off the head and left three of Morris's and Briars sitting there all oh. on their own. So five nil after three ends. It's going to be... Uh, a big ask now for Tio and Taiki to come back in this one. Yeah, now is the hour for sure for Tio and Taiki under um, huge pressure, 5 nil down. It was unlucky to drop that three, uh, but that's bowls. He played with a little bit too much speed, really, and so uh, that's what led to the downfall and uh, led to a limit taking his own shots off the mm. head. Uh, his own nearest bowl off the head and um, yeah unfortunately for him three of the oppositions were left sitting there <laughs> sometimes that happens in bowls doesn't it at any level of the game you know I've uh, played a bit of twilight bowls myself in the, the social setting at a club and you can do something and think well I don't even understand <laughs> I, don't, I don't even understand what's just happened to me uh, but we have dropped points out of it it's amazing what can happen with bowls especially with a drive shot you know the the, the full old, full blooded drive shots you can I, I, quite often i've i've said i would love to see a, a real super slow motion replay mm. of exactly which bowl hit which 
to see what does happen sometimes because yeah. you you watch a bowl come down and when it's when it's when the dust settles you wonder how on earth did all those bowls disappear you know <laughs> so as we see an excellent uh, second bowl there from Morris and just important uh, Tio and Taiki will be thinking look even if we score one point and that's a beautiful bowl there from Tio we're within four on the last end. Anything can happen, you know. Just so any scoring here is great for Tio and Taiki. More than one is fine, but uh, they just want to score on this end, don't they? Oh, it's it's a um, yeah. They have to basically. Yeah, otherwise it's um, a long, long way back. I mean, there's only six bowls per end, so the maximum you can score is a six. Um, so if they don't score here, they're going to be six nil down, which means they, you know, a minimum of six nil down. Uh, they're going to need the full the full count on the last end to, to force a force a draw. Yeah, it's a, you're asking a lot, and Tio under the line again. Beautiful weight. You look at where it's finished in line with the jack. The weight was perfect, but always felt narrow. Yeah, good to be able to hear that from uh, <laughs> a very clear direction there from Morris. So I'm saying play down there with a yard of weight. Now, um, I'm sure you'll be thinking if you've just tuned in and you hear us talking in imperial imperial measurements, I'm pretty sure it's essentially the official bowls measurement, isn't it, Dave? We talk in feet and inches and yards. It's just a quirk, a quirk of the game. So you have to you figure it out pretty quickly uh, what all these things meet. So Briar will not be confused by a yard of weight. You know exactly what's been asked for. Morris is interested in this. This is pretty close. If he can turn that one over, oh, she played it with beautiful speed. He asked for just a yard away, and that's all she had. That was a, an excellent attempt. And look at all the uh, the grey black balls, we'll call them. Uh, second shots they've got there now. They've got four second shots. Um, so she can play with a lot of confidence to try and eliminate the, uh, the shot bowl there. But of course, Taiki will be wanting to, uh, to add another one on the head so that... Um, the shot they've got at the moment's got a partner. <laughs> yeah, it's looking pretty lonely, isn't it? That one white bowl sitting there. He's not bad here. Has he got the running? Has he got the running? Not quite. About four seconds. Same weight, same bowl. She was very close with the first bowl, so that's a brilliant piece of instruction from Morris as well. Same bowl, just play the same bowl as you just did, and you'll be very, very close again. Yeah. Oh, she's smiling. It's going to hold, I think. Oh, she's just missed it by millimetres. Added more weight to that one, didn't she, Dave? Like You can see yep. that bowl finished in the ditch. Possibly intentional. You know, you get good results if you're going to hit things. The, the added weight just held the line on the bowl for a bit longer and stopped it from turning to the jack or to the shot bowl. So she's either got to... Now, this is the, a big decision for her to make here with her last bowl. Keep the same weight and change her line. Taiki willing it to hold. He's trailed it back. That's oh. a great shot. Very, very good bowl because it's eliminated a lot of the danger mm. that they had. He's actually unlucky not Might to trail it further. Might see a change of hand here now from Bry. She might follow that bowl down on the backhand. Let's see. Morris is obviously having a good look at the head and he'll give instructions in a moment. So nope, she's sticking with the forehand. Oh, she's not short. Driving. She's not short. Is she going to get it? It's gone. What's happened? Still one down, says Morris, so the jacks getting knocked out of the rink. That means it gets replaced on the two-metre mark. Uh, so we're going to see one at least to Tio and Taiki. That was, oh, I mean, she's got a lovely run shot on her, doesn't she, Dave? That was a very um, effective bowl again right in the area. So the jack's going to be placed on the two-metre mark. Okay, so a bit of conjecture down there at the moment about touches. So just explaining to those that are not quite 100% sure of the rules here, you can see uh, that shot on the screen there at the moment, those two little white markers on the green background are the rink markers. So if the jack squirts out 
side of those rink markers mm. the, it, it is declared dead and for the purposes of tonight's uh, tournament or tonight's format the jack is replaced on what we call the two meter mark so you can see where the jack is there that's right on the center line again but two meters from the ditch yeah beautifully explained thank you dave it made more sense than my ramble and i think they've decided to just try and get a second shot here so they want to score a two and that means they'll be two five down on the last end so we call this a bonus bowl very important moment in this game it's the second to last end you really want to score a couple Oh, just, just the one. So still looks like a big mountain to climb for Tio and Taiki, but it's possible they they will be happy that they've scored on that end, Dave. What do you have to do, do you think, to try and get that the points required now? Well, they need a four to force an extra end. So once again, similar scenario to the last game where we need you need to make sure that you don't have any short bowls. Try and get to try and get your bowls just to that two, three feet past the jack or mm. right on top of it one of the two but if you can just get it just just in behind the jack and then hopefully someone will be able to play the shot uh later on towards the end of the at the completion of the end to trail the jack to your bowls and uh and hopefully you can get the necessary four shots required here uh to to force an extra end so the first thing is not to be short and then everything else comes from that. You know, if you're just tuning into this game, you might think it's a simple one. And it is at the base level. You're just trying to roll a, 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 an object as close as you can to another one. But uh, there are so many tactics that come into play. And sort of the better you get, the more there is to learn. <laughs> and so on and so forth. You know, we could sit down and talk forever about uh, bowl strategy. It really is. It's like, um, it's like chess, but the pieces don't always do what you tell them to do. That's the tricky part, isn't it? That's the tricky part. Oh, the theory's easy. That's why I do the commentary. <laughs> That's more getting simple. Those chess, getting those chess pieces to do the right thing, yep. Oh, Morris Gavina. Oh. Sign of approval there. Briar Atkinson. She's been in really good form in this game, hasn't she, Dave? I think uh, the standout player for me. Absolutely. She's played very, very well. Super relaxed. I mean, obviously she would have been nervous at the start of the game, but she just looks so relaxed. Smile on her face. Beautiful delivery. Just lets it flow. And, uh, yeah, just she seems to be having a blast out there, which I think is the, is the most important thing. Yeah, great to see. And you will notice... Um, there. Oh, it's that smile again. So she's been changed. No. Nope. I think there was a consideration of switching to the other side. You see the um, <laughs> uh, the players are kitted out in uh, the black and grey shirts with the, the, the logo on them. If you like what they look like, you can find out or you can get them from the Bowls New Zealand shop. It's online, Dave, on the Bowls New Zealand website. So go there. We've got an online shop and you can purchase uh, uh, a whole lot of apparel that's got the... Uh, that logo on it amongst other things i think there's bowls cloths and um all the all the all the things at the risk of sounding uh, too specific <laughs> <laughs> so on the forehand now need to bowl to get back you talked about the back bowls yeah, okay so that one's back there but the unfortunate thing for Tio and Taiki is that uh, Briar's bowl is in a beautiful position in behind there and, and almost eliminating the option of them hunting for the uh, for the jack to get the trail. It is still on, but they would have to play, as we're looking at the mat now, they have to play the back end and try and trail the jack to the left of our screen as we look at it now, over towards their own white bowls. Find those four points, so it's a big ask here for Tio. He's going to have to play three, essentially three perfect bowls if they uh, want to get through to the final tonight. Otherwise, they're going to be playing off for third and fourth against Rob Ashton and Peter Shang after this match. But, you know, anything's possible in bowls. Yep. Uh, you've seen some absolutely... There's stuff that you would not believe happens, happens, because it comes down uh, to pressure at the end of the day, and pressure can do funny things. So he's playing the backhand. He'd be looking to 
there's two options here. Looking to trail the jacket. He's close. He's, he's close. close. He's got it. He's yeah. got it. Squeeze off the black ball. That's a beautiful shot there from Tio. Unlucky actually not to have the jack shuffle a little bit more to the right as we see it. He almost got it too square there, Dave. He did probably, but he's, the good news is that he's, I think he'll be holding two. Mm. I think he'll be holding two, and, and so he's got two more bowls to come. He adds two more shots, and then quietly he'll be hoping that Morris doesn't uh, muck his plan up by putting a good <laughs> bowl in. Let's see if Morris can counter that great bowl from Tio. Problem with some of the best he's laid plans, isn't it? Still. Oh, he's oh, overplayed it. Decisions, decisions, decisions. The forehand is now, to is our right. Shot. Is that we what you think he'd be doing here? Yeah. yeah, I think he can he can play drawing on the forehand now. He can look to promote one of the two short white bowls of his own. Or if he comes underneath him, you'll see what Taiki's calling now. Comes underneath him and sits the black bowl through and stays there. He might have the four or three or four shots already, though he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it at all. He could get a good result though, off anything he's found fresh air. Isn't it incredible in bowls? Sometimes you, I mean, there was a hole, there's like 300 bowls in the way. He managed to get his collision bowl to go clean through, didn't touch, didn't touch a thing. Staggering sometimes. Oh, that's a good follow through from Morris Symes. And uh, four, I mean, four is a big ask here. Do you just wind up and pray to your gods? Well, I think there's an option there. Yeah, definitely if he can drive that. Uh, I think that's what Taiki's looking at here now. You can drive those three bowls. If you, if you drive... Drive the shortest shot bowl, or the shortest black. Shortest shot bowl, and there's a chance all three of them would go yep. and leave the four white ones sitting there. Yep, absolutely agree with that call, Dave. Oh, how's your weight, Tio? Needs to get it square. He's having a crack. He could be close. Where's the bowl? Let's look at this. Oh, great effort. Not going to be worth the number. And so we, we just see where the jack's gone. Has it gone dead? It looks like it's gone. Oh, it doesn't the matter. They've, if it gets replaced, they're, they're, they're not going to win anyway. So congratulations go to Morris Symes and Briar Atkinson who've made their way through to the major final. Great stuff to see the handshakes there. These teams' first night on television. Really good stuff. And what's what's your summary? What do you think happened in that game, uh, Dave? What what do you read into it? Well, I think Briar Atkinson was the star of the show, definitely. On the draw, she was getting... Well, while well, she wasn't absolutely bombing the jack, she was mm. getting bowls nice and handy on the head. Uh, and always always outnumbered the opposition when it, with, as, with bowls on the head. And when you're in that situation, nine times out of ten, you're going to be winning those heads. So, and Morris added the odd uh, shot or two here or there to uh, to assist Bry, but she was the sh star of the show there. Nice, relaxed, uh, informal, or not informal, but nice, relaxed way she plays the game. Smile on her face, and the bowls showed it. Uh, as a result of that, she played exceptionally well. Yeah, she did, and you could see. Um, uh, so Morrison Briar, a coach and coachee, or coach and I don't know, coach and athlete. Um, you could see. I think Morris. I, I'm pretty sure they've had a conversation because Morris is making a lot of the tactical decisions, wasn't he? He was the one saying, you know, this is what I would like us to do, etc., etc. Yep, I think a wise old head there and, and you know, obviously the coach and Briar is, um, obviously respects uh, Morris's fantastic knowledge and, um, yeah, so Morris definitely... And here we have shot. John with Jenny and Terry. Mother and daughter being Jenny and Terry. Now, which is which? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the daughter. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Terry. How long have you been playing balls? Uh, this is my fifth season. Okay. Um, yeah, over a span of 13 years. I started oh, as a right. teenager and then I sort of had breaks in between. Yeah. Uh, but I have played indoor balls for 19 years. That's interesting. A lot of people play indoor balls and then sort of progress, don't they, to outdoor? Yeah, there are quite a few. Um, I think it gives you a good 
head start yeah. um, to the outdoor game. You've got the basics already and you've just got to fine tune your skills. Brilliant. I know um, we had one fantastic shot. The crowd here applauded, even the ones inside, Jenny. And, and that was, I think, on the fourth end, wasn't it? When you were down four and you had to play a brilliant shot, and you did. I was well overdue for playing a good ball, so I'm glad it came out at that moment. So. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're pretty impressive opponents you were against, Peter and, and Rob. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so so they've probably got the big billing tonight. I heard the TAB odds for them were pretty low compared to us. So, <laughs> well, I think you, the two of you now go through to the grand final, and, and you'll be pleased about that. You're no stranger, of course, to uh, performing on TV, having been involved in the yeah. Bowl Three Five or a couple of years ago. Yeah, I guess in Bowl Three Five, I had two people to help me out. This time, it was all on Terry's shoulders. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but you'd be impressed the way she's gone. Hey, hey! So congratulations, well done. You're through to the final, and uh, with any luck, it'll be like uh, last night when the women prevailed. Anyway, <laughs> we're coming up shortly with the uh, playoff of the two losing teams, and then we go on to the big final a bit later on. And here we go, welcome back to the Twilight Bowls League. We've just seen the preliminary games. We know we've got Terry and Jenny taking on Morris and Byron in the major final. And that last game there, we saw Teo and Taiki, uh, 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 they're going to be playing Peter and Rob. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, Dave, what do you think we're going to see in this third versus fourth game? Who's your pick to win? Well, look, I'll tell you what, these two... These two combinations will be smarting a little bit because they, they would have thought, you know, they would have been liking to think that they were going to make the big grand final. So I think they've got, a, they're both going to have a point to prove here and they're going to come out all guns blazing. Should be a good game. They've had a game on the rink now to settle in. The nerves will be gone. So I'm expecting a high quality game here. And I think I might have to go with the Cook Islanders. Okay, well I'll go with um, I'll go with Robin Peter then, so we can be on opposite sides of the same coin. But you're right, you know, it's a six-week um, uh, competition, a six-week league, and they're going to get other opportunities these pairs teams. But uh, uh, four very competitive players, and the opportunity just to go in this third and fourth playoff. No, no, we're still here. We can still play bowls. Certainly. Oh, and he's got rid of the he's got rid of the cap to reveal a magnificent haircut and still the sunglasses on top that's cool I like it if I put my glasses on top of my head I wouldn't be able to see Dave so I'm impressed <laughs> just struggling a little bit with the speed one short one quite a way through there so and that crap right now Rob, now, um, like like all of us, the body is starting to um, let Rob down. I know he's had major back issues over the years, and we can see that um, his delivery not quite as as uh, fluent as it used to be. Still very effective, as we see Taiki here on his forehand side make his way down the green. Five ends. It's you know we know it's a short game, but it's staggering just how short they actually are, Dave. We've blinked. We're halfway through the night here. Yeah, I know. It's amazing how quickly it goes, and it's um, but it, and it's interesting to note that both the games we've seen so far, there was a number. Uh, the first game there was a three on the first end, and then in the second game there was also um, a, a big number drop. So. 
those you can't really afford to drop those you want to get them you'd love the idea of getting a, a three or a four but um you can't really afford to drop those big numbers over a five in game yeah it's going to be really interesting looking back once we have a bit of data um for the first couple of weeks of of this league how many times say a team scores a three how many times they go on to win that game because i think like you said if you can score more than two points over five in a five end game so more than two points on one end that's pretty that's going to go a long way to making sure you finish uh, finish on top isn't it absolutely Tio here is looking for the the target area now uh, we mentioned it at the top of the show it's a quite a, it's actually a, a quite a small target area it looks larger than it is on television you can fit three bowls or three and a half bowls in between the jack which is in the middle of of the stickers and the outside of the stickers so it's actually not a huge space to try and get your bowls to go they've been a little bit disappointed with the start here no one's got one very close at all here it's a real rough start to this uh, third and fourth playoff yes and, um, here's the best bowl of the end so far all oh, that's ran run through a little bit too but uh one of those scratchy ends and these are the ends where numbers can just happen for no reason you look at it you think well another bowls are particularly close but it's where twos and threes can just they can just turn up can't they yeah, it's not very often you drop a, a three or a four or a five or something a number like that with the bowls condense really closely on the head normally when numbers like that are dropped you can guarantee the heads are pretty widespread so it means there's no percentage shots on so you just you literally have to try and draw and there's there's gaps left right and centre so Tio doing everything he needs to do here they'll be holding like five shots and there's gaps left everywhere so you just have to try play a good bowl huge pressure on this first end for Peter Sang on the forehand this a, side this is a massive bowl this one I think he's three or four down here he's going to have to uh got good speed but he might have just poked it out a little bit wide but that's still going to cut a fair oh few that's out. a beautiful bowl that's really classy there from peter saying big pressure and second just shot he got second shot with that bowl yep the yeah, end is finished bowl. they're just having a look at things now they're just checking on the second shot so one conceded yep and sue our umpire our trusty umpire We'll figure out the rest. So what a big bowl that was from Peter Sane. He was five down, steering down, five down on that first end. That would have been an absolute horror start for him. So a good shot to cut it down to one, we think, but it might be two yet. Wait and see. Those measures, measures haven't changed in about 150 years, have they, Dave? They're pretty much the same now. Yeah, definitely only the one. So a very, very good bowl from Peter Sane there. Saved, the, saved their bacon big time. So just the one shot for Tio and Taiki to get us underway in this minor final. And again with this format, we have a situation now where Peter's last bowl was brilliant and he gets to play three more bowls. He doesn't have to wait to, wait to, to get back down to the player's end. He gets to play three more bowls and he'll be feeling good about that last one. I'm expecting the quality of this end to be a, a lot better. The guys would have got the been sitting down for just a wee while. Well, Tio and Taiki haven't, of course. They've just come straight off the green. So Peter and Rob had a, an end to get their eye in. Let's see if we can uh, have a better looking head this time. Absolutely. Tio steering this bowl down. Good line. Just a reminder to the viewers uh, tuning in this Twilight Bowls League. It's a six-week competition, so we've got five more weeks every Tuesday and Wednesday night from 6.30 on Sky Sport. And if you want to come and watch the action live, you're more than welcome to come down here to the Royal Oak Bowls Club or Bowls Royal Oak. They've got a special Twilight Bowls League menu running, Dave, to fantastic food. And the bar is open, so it's a good night to come down and watch four quick-fire games of bowls with... Uh, a variety of different pairs combinations. I can't think of a much better thing to do on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. 
Absolutely, especially if it was my turn to cook. <laughs> I know the feeling. Once again, not the greatest of starts here from the guys. Peter steering this one down. Is he going to pull up? No, he's running through too. Or he's going to sit yeah. in the back pole. So, so well, Peter, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say here, no one's got the shot at the moment. <laughs> that far away. That's how it feels. But uh, yeah, Peter Shane. I was talking to him before Andy said he uh, played soccer or football for most of his younger days, but him and a group of mates felt like they were getting a bit tired of getting knocked around at football, the aches and pains, so they thought, well, why don't we start playing bowls? And they all joined the Henderson Bowling Club where he played for five years until he was approached by a legend of the game and the late Ivan Kostinich uh, to join the Carlton Bowling Club where he's played ever since and been one of the great bowlers to come out of that club has Peter Shane. So on the crossover, you'd say it should be plenty of room here, shouldn't there, Dave? Yeah, there's still plenty of room there. Peter Sane would have the shot with that uh, pole at the back of the head, uh, but yeah, still plenty of room. The other thing, look, you know, we talk as, as coaches, we talk about the sport being pretty simple. There's only two things you've got to worry about, sending the ball down the correct line at the correct speed. And uh, one of the things, the easier part of those two to get is definitely the line. So you should, one thing that these guys should be uh, should be doing now is nailing that line. And we can tell if they're nailing the line by the, where their bowl finishes in relation to the centre line on the, on, you know, of, the, of the rink. And so you can see those bowls are pretty much on. The white one to the right has perhaps missed the line quite badly. Hmm. Even Taiki with that ball won't be happy with the line he's taken there. But trying to get the line first, if you, if you, can, if you can consistently get the correct line, the speed will come. And so these guys will be a bit disappointed that they aren't absolutely nailing their line yet. So here we go. Rob Ashton up on that ball. One, two. Two rolls in. Well, I would say that the white bowl at 11 o'clock might be holding the shot. I think you're right. There's still a ton of room here, guys. Yeah, yeah. They'll be expecting better of themselves. So Taiki's got two bowls. So does Rob. I like those, those sunglasses. It makes for a cool camera shot. It's nice and reflective. Great stuff. Now, how's this bowl? Is he going to stop? Is stop. he going to stop? One down, says Peter. Play your back that end, last please. In, yep, that last ball that came in will be the shot. Can you see that ball there? On the back end. He clapped his hands. Yeah, it's usually clapped a good sign. Alec, you, th you think that's a good sign? Let's see if you're right. Oh, no. <laughs> Apparently it's not a good sign, but he wasn't far away. So a bonus bowl here for Taiki. This is a, an important bowl because he's holding shot. And, oh no, Rob's still got one to come. But no, I, I was thinking this was the last bowl of the end, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, but it's still an important bowl because he needs to get another shot there. He's close here. He's close yeah, he's here. here. That's a beautiful correction. Commonwealth Games. Bronze medalist. And that's a beautiful bowl. Hard to remove. There's no point in removing it. Oh, actually good call. He's saying kill it and it gets respotted on the two meter. Okay, fair enough. What are your thoughts on that one, Dave? Yep, well, it is an option. It is an option. The, the laws of the, the conditions of play that we're using for this event, if it, if, it, if, it, if the jack is killed outside the confines of the rink, it's replaced on the two-meter uh, spot. And you can see that at the moment, the, the two white bowls of uh, 
Peter and Rob are the ones right at the back of the rink. He's but opted he's just to replace it. He's close here. He's close here. Rob Ashton needs it to get down. Oh, unlucky. Great try. It was a beautiful effort, Dave. I think it's just going to be the one. Yeah, very, very good attempt there. He, he was unlucky not to land the, the, the bowl full and stay there himself for shot, but he did reduce it. They were two down. He ended up only dropping the one, so 2-0 after two ends to Tio and Taiki. So we see the crowd there gathering to watch this Twilight Bowls League. And remember, every Tuesday and Wednesday night, the Twilight Bowls League is here at the Royal Oak, Royal Oak Bowls, or Bowls Royal Oak. That's just a mesmerising shot, isn't it, Dave, of the bowls going on the the uh, the golden retriever. In the golden retriever. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. So two, two okay. after two. Fair to call it a scratchy start, Dave. We've got three yep. ends to go. What do you think the teams will be thinking? How are they feeling? Well, I think they need Taiki and, and T.O. will definitely be thinking, right, we need to really nail the advantage we've got we're, we're lucky to score on those first two ends because they were pretty loose ends so we need to tighten up now try and score Rob. that's a lot better opener much better time. opener I a handy bowl to start difficult. with there so Rob don't know what he said but it was something funny <laughs> changing his hand so Peter said try the other hand mate just try something a little bit different Steve, which is not a bad option if you're struggling on one particular side of the ring give the other side a go and he was just a bit quick yeah Taiki with this one he used to be saying to himself beat your own bowl just beat your own bowl he slapped his he leg He doesn't there. like it straight away. Something's upset him about it. He doesn't like it. Well, what's wrong with this one? I don't know quite why he didn't like this. Is that a bit of, do you think that was a bit of gamesmanship, Dave? He's just going, oh, no, it's not a good bowl. But actually, it is a good bowl, or was it just... <laughs> I wonder... I wonder um, oh, I'm probably overthinking it, I think. It's just, he's he would have just a, thought it was bad. He's still a little bit narrow. He was still a little bit narrow, so maybe that's what he, he realised straight away, that he didn't have the right have the quiet uh, line. line. I like this from Rob. He's gone back to the forehand. Look at this here from Rob Ashton. That's a good shot. Well played. In the middle of the circles, pretty much. Very, very good bowl. Yeah, he went back to the hand that he likes, obviously. He overruled Peter. Peter had asked him to have a go down the backhand, but he overruled Peter and said, no, I'm going to go back to this forehand. And, <laughs> and got, the, got, the, got the result. Again. So rinse and repeat here for Rob Ashton, and they should cross over holding two. Playing to finish third on this second night of the Twilight Poles League. Five more weeks to go. Every Tuesday and Wednesday night from 6.30. Eight different combinations. And he just, he didn't do much wrong there. It wouldn't have been more than. Yeah, there you go. Peter saying you weren't that much wider. Didn't do much wrong. Okay, so the head a lot better looking uh, than the first two heads, definitely. We've got bowls in play, a lot more bowls in play already. Uh, Rob Ashton holding shot at the moment. <laughs> so just wait for the bowl to be played. So Tio here on his forehand side. He's gone. He's gone. Oh! Hunting. Wow. Yeah, two options. Yeah, he was looking for either the bowl or the jack, and he just snuck past the shot bowl and got the jack and see it and killed it. It actually went outside the confines of the rink. Uh, and so back on the two-metre mark we go, and there's no change. It's still one to Peter and Rob. That's amazing that they found a way found a way to get the jack. If, I mean, if you'd looked at that head and said, well, you're going to kill the jack from here, and you're not going to go through the shot bowl to do it, I would have... I would have told you it was impossible. Must have got just the finest part of the jack to manage that. 
Look at this here from Peter Shane. How's your weight, Peter? Yep, holding, holding two. Beautiful line. But room to draw for Tio. He'll back himself, would expect himself to draw the shot here. Vikings interested. Vikings this is a beautiful bowl. Very, very good bowl. Absolutely like beautiful bowl. bowl. And Peter Shane, just seeing that happen, you just go, well, if you can do it, so can I. Peter can play to arrive to this one. Play looking to, yeah, he's, he's played a slightly tighter line, but possibly needed another yard of weight just to land the shot bowl or trail the jack round the corner. See those three white bowls there, three second shots he's got. He may even, depending on what Tio does here, but Peter may go hunting for this shot bowl here if Tio can't get another one handy. But he has. Oh, that's two classy bowls from Tio. Yeah, mate. Two, mate. Two down. Can you see enough of the black bowl to get rid of them? Yeah, resting through. So just a nice reaching weight here from Peter Sang. And an opportunity for a number. Yeah, he's playing with quite a bit of weight here. He's Looking given himself... To those two shot. Oh, he's not playing with as much weight as I thought he was. He's actually needs the jack, the needs jack. the jack. Oh, what a ball. What a shot from Peter Sang. Beautiful stuff. That's magnificent. And he's scored two for his team. Snick the jack over to the right. <laughs> Out of his hand, it looked like it was quicker than that, but it wasn't. He played it with beautiful speed, in fact. And it would have been just enough, enough speed to if he had landed on the shot balls to stay there for shot. But he was underneath. Plan B, he had two or three options there, and he definitely got the best one. Yeah. Flicking the jack sideways, giving himself two shots. That was amazing. Very, very good bowl. If, uh, if you listen real carefully at home, you might have heard uh, Peter say, he said, you showed me the green. He said that to T.O., so <laughs> that is a little comment after you've just played an absolute bomb to snick the jack over to the right. T.O. and Taiki were thinking, well, if the head doesn't change, we're going to be 4-0 up with two ends to go, but they've blinked. Peter's played a bomb. And now it's two apiece on the second to last end. So they start again pretty much, Dave, and you've got two ends of bowls to go. Yep, two ends shoot out. Let's see if Peter can put pressure on early here. He didn't like that one out of his hand. He can see he's missed the line. That's the thing I was talking about earlier on. They'll be disappointed in not being able to nail their line. They should know the lines on the rinks by now. And uh, so Pete will be pretty disappointed with himself there. So we see Teo on his forehand side. He started playing bowls, he said, for no particular reason. He was playing tennis in the Bridge Park Club, his next to tennis club. He said he was playing tennis and saw some, some people he knew playing bowls and thought, well, I'll give that a go. And uh, like we said, he's played at the World Championships for his country. Uh, so I think that decisions it's gone quite well for him. It's one of those sports, the sport of bowls, that if you've got good eye-hand coordination, it's the same with any sport. And if you've been uh, reasonably proficient at uh, at any other sport, then you'll find you'll pick the rudiments of the game up reasonably quickly. Eye-hand coordination, as with most sports, it's uh, an important factor for the sport of bowls. Just over-adjusting him with his speed here, and he's gone sailing through. So it's going to be a bit of pressure for Rob Ashton on the crossover here. We saw Peter with his heroics uh, score a two for his team, but Rob's going to be the one doing the work on this end, Dave. Good shot. Oh, a little touch. A little touch there. So the, you'll see the our, our umpire come in and, and put some chalk marks, some spray chalk marks on that bowl, and that means that 
if that bowl gets pushed into the ditch, uh, any bowl that goes into the ditch is put on the on the bank. It's, it's out of play unless it's got chalk on it, which means it's touched the jack. And if it's get, if it gets pushed into the ditch, it's still live. It stays in the ditch as a live bowl. So that people have often, often asked me a lot, what, what, what's that little bit of chalk that they put on the bowl? What's that all about? Well, that explains it. I understood what you were saying, Dave. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> so Rob Ashen, huge pressure here. They're all square on the board, the scoreboard at the top left. Just trying to draw the shot here. He's been preferring to play the forehand, so you'd expect him to play a good one. He's not far away. It could be shot. That could be shot. It's very, very close. So Rob, a, Rob, a hugely experienced player, been playing for a number of years. And as I mentioned earlier on, his body letting him down a little bit now. The, the back issues means that he can't quite get down as low as he would like to deliver the bowl. So it's dropping out of his hand a little bit, but still a very, very proficient bowler. So once again, it shows even someone with a slight disability like Rob or a little bit of old, old age can still play the sport at an incredibly good level. Anyone, anyone can play this game. That's what's fantastic about it. And like, if you've been tuning in and you're not a bowler yet, <laughs> or you haven't played for a while, it's an easy sport, easy sport to join into. There's Twilight Bowls leagues all around the country. We've got over 460 clubs in New Zealand. Most of them run a Twilight Bowls league. Just go to the Bowls New Zealand website, have a look, join in. They're short format games. There's uh, food and drink available. And from there, you can uh, go on and do anything that you would like to do. As we see Rob Ashton, that's beautiful speed he was looking just to punch his bowl that sits at one o'clock to the jack up missed it just a bowl narrow Dave it wasn't far off no not a bad option to try and promote his own bowl there and Taiki it may be the shot bowl already but it's definitely not that close so no wonder he was trying to promote it so this bowl here has gone high wide and handsome a chance here of uh Rob can sit on that that bowl, the shot bowl or the second shot bowl. It sits right on the edge of the sticker of the target. He could be holding a number, and he thinks he's close here. They both think he's close. He's going to get a result. Let's see what happens. Yep, did well enough. That's a good shot. Nice percentage shot there, wasn't it, Dave? Yep, absolutely. Very, very good. He had a couple of his own bowls short there. Chance to promote either one. He got a very, he got it, played it perfectly. Had lots of options. So it was a good shot selection to play that shot for sure, and he got the desired result. Taiki not looking happy. Probably looking to replace that shot bowl, but has underplayed it. He's got the green for weight, eh, but not the, uh, not the weight for it. So we're going to see on this fourth end, penultimate end, one to Peter and Rob. So they hit the front, and it's uh, it's going to come down to the last end just to see uh, who who's going to be the victor of this game. Oh, a ball's run away. Oh, 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 what's happening? No, he's caught it. That was well salvaged. Very professional uh, bowls retrieving there from our bowls retriever, Ben. I thought he'd lost it for a second, Dave, but he recovered the situation absolutely magnificently. Great recovery. <laughs> so last end, 3-2. Okay. Last end shootout here, 3-2, you're right, and it's going to be uh, Rob to get us underway. He'll be, a bit of, he'll be full of confidence after playing that shot on the last end to, to get them a shot. Starting off on the backhand side. That's interesting because the society has not been favouring. Goodness gracious me. Well, the Jack is no longer in the target area, team. A little bit fortunate there because he was he overplayed it speed-wise, but, um, yeah, the Jack got in the way, as they say. <laughs> it's one of those bowls you just thank the bowling gods. There you go. Cool. <laughs> this has gone well. Uh, nonetheless, it's, uh, it means 
uh, Taiki and Teo have a new place to be trying to draw to. That's a pretty good first bowl. It's a very, very good reply. Very good reply. And finished in an excellent home, even though it's not the shot. Rob staying on the back end. <laughs> I've put on a song that Peter Sane likes. <laughs> Obviously. They, um, he... away there. <laughs> I wonder if the players can request like their favourite their favourite song to play. Potentially it'd be good, wouldn't it? Although also potentially distracting, depending. Distracting, yeah, yeah. but yeah, it could put you in a good, happy place happy though. Happy space, yeah. Make, make you play some good bowls. <laughs> As long as you don't try and dance as you let go of the bowl, I think you'll be fine. So even though we had Rob running into the jack a little bit fortuitously, the rest of the bowls on this end have been reasonably good, especially the two from Taiki. He's got yeah. two very, very handy bowls. And uh, playing to a displaced jack, we call it a displaced jack, it's shifted off the original place, is not an easy art. No. Uh, and takes a lot of practice so he's he's done exceptionally well to get a, a, a couple of handy ones yeah Tio, you heard him there say play for the the jack or replace the bowl you make two so a nice positive bowl called here from taiki how's he looking close How's he, looking? he says oh, just drifting that a little bit if it stays up on the paddock, it's a good bowl. That's good stuff. So, I, I mean, I know you look at it and you think, well, Peter and Rob are holding the shot, and they are. But it, it's a reasonably simple, not quite a bread and butter shot, but say, I don't know, bread and bread and butter and jam. <laughs> a slightly difficult than bread and butter shot on for Tio just to pull the jack back. So you see that camera angle there. If he can just rest the white bowl or move the jack back a little bit, it's happy days for Tio and Taiki. The only thing I'd say is there's still some holes there. Mm. Still some holes there. And the jack's not very big. It's not a very big target. The bowl would be... The, is obviously a bit bigger than the jack. And so I'd be playing to, to look for the bowl. And plan B would be the jack. Uh, but yeah, there's still some holes there. So it's not an easy shot. Either just... Well, that could be nuisance value, yeah. that one right in line with the uh, shot bowl. Tio quickly into his work, though, so he must still see it. He must still see the shot. Okay, but he doesn't like it. Turned his, turned his head straight away. Didn't like it immediately. <laughs> well, I don't know what he didn't like. Oh, there you go. He knew he was going to miss by half a bowl. That was a fantastic <laughs> effort for a bowl. He didn't like immediately, wasn't it? It was. I'm not sure quite why he didn't like it but you're right it was a very good bowl in the end unbelievable and Peter he shake his hand I don't know if that means he thinks it's good or if he means he thinks it's not good oh he said he's been safe well he hasn't made the head worse has he you know it's not it's not worse than it was and it's not better than it was so two bowls to go for Tio. he has two more opportunities here if they score a one, it goes to a tie break. If they score a two, they win this game and finish third on this night, on the second night of the Twilight Bowls League. <laughs> Steering it down. Probably well. means it's a shocker, because if he if he's interested in it, <laughs> <laughs> whereas the last one, he just about I'm turned his back on it, it was a good one. It was within a painter, a, a layer of paint, of actually getting the, the jack back on <laughs> the second bolt. Yeah, here we go. Peter saying this is his last one. Just be looking to get another bowl on the head. Oh, another be careful, real, Peter. Be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. <laughs> what happened? Oh, what I happened? Think they might still have the shot. There's a toucher. Saw Rob Ashton go through 27 different emotions in 15 seconds. I still got the shot though, and so I would argue he's got to play it here. He's got to play a good bowl to get the the desired result for him and Rob. 
on its at... way. Let's see. He's looking to sit the shot bowl or touch the jack. Oh, oh he played oh. a lot more weight. <laughs> Took oh his own second shot me. out, and so it's still one for Rob and Peter. So they've won this game by four shots to two. Yes, and congratulations to Peter and Rob. That was a game it had everything a scratchy start, and the players found their straps near the end. You can see on the scoreboard just ones and two scored. No multiples, so congratulations uh, to uh, 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 Peter and Rob. They'll be happy with that third place finish. These guys have got five more weeks of the Twilight Bowls League uh, to come, so uh, hang with us, team, because there's one more game of bowls to go, and it's the grand final. Terry and Jenny playing Morris and Briar back after this. And welcome back to the Twilight Bowls League. We see the final for tonight. Terry and Jenny versus Morris and Briar. Dave, how do you think it's going to play out? This should be a ripper. This should be a ripper. There's no two ways about it. Though. These two combinations were the, the best that we saw. And, and I still think that um, uh, Briar was probably the best player we've seen in action all night. But who can forget that bomb of a bowl that Jenny Stockford played in their game? And so, yeah, it should be a bit. Let's hope the standard's a little bit better than the last game. Pretty loose heads in that last game. Let's hope they're a lot tighter in this one. Yeah, I mean, I think we saw these uh, these two teams, they, they deserve to win their preliminary matches. Goodness, I didn't think that word was going to be so, it's so hard to say when I started it. Uh, but uh, they deserve to win them. Jenny Stockford played a really good bowl. There was that one end, I think it was the third end of that game when Rob and Peter played a blinder they were holding what seemed like it was about 20 points and Jenny had a lot of composure on her forehand side but just to the left as we see it just drew the shot the absolute shot so I think uh, if I was here I'd be taking a lot of confidence from that into tonight because that's a shot that would have felt like it was almost impossible and if you can do anything on the night uh, you just feel like you're capable of doing anything again don't you Dave? Absolutely, that would have given her a heap of confidence and um, you feel quite chuffed and yeah, it lifts you, lifts you a couple of feet off the ground and gets you really standing proud and tall and ready to fly right into it again. It was a fantastic bowl. Jenny Stockford on the forehand. What a great night of bowls. This has been the second night of the Twilight Bowls League. Five weeks to go, so you can tune in. You can mark it in your calendars every Tuesday and Wednesday night from 6.30pm. There will be a new winner every night, and once we've had a couple of weeks, we'll start to have a look and see uh, which pairs combinations are performing particularly well, but just being an exciting time, Dave. Really, really awesome. It's fantastic for the sport. What I'm, li what I'm loving about uh, this, this particular... Uh, league is the combinations that we've got on display it's not um you know the, the real super gun top level players in the country um on display it shows the diversity that we've got in the sport definitely and um so it's it's awesome and it's great and and let's hope that um 
as they get more and more used to the rink, that the the quality of the heads gets that little bit better as well. Oh, it absolutely will. We've got five more weeks here. It's the same week. They go in one direction. It's the same length, and uh, I've got no doubt we'll see the standard continue to improve and improve. And like you said, Dave, it's just great to be able to. I mean, we'll look at this this game, this final for tonight. We've got uh, Morris, who it's fair to say. Uh, as a veteran of the sport, he's been playing for more than in, into his sixth decade, uh, playing bowls, playing with his uh, uh, personally coaches, Briar Atkinson, who's uh, just young. He's been playing for like twice the amount of time she's been upright on the planet, Dave, and they get to play pairs together. And then we see the mother and daughter, Terry Blackbourne, Jenny Stockford, playing together, families, friends. Uh, it's just great stuff to see uh, broadcast live on our televisions for six weeks. And look at this here from Terry Blackbourne, just about snuck into the target there. It's definitely the shot, so Morris will just need to, got the line right with his uh, last ball, just needs a, another yard of weight. He might have overcooked the weight this time. So one indicated, one to the white team. So this is Terry Blackbourne here on the backhand. Very focused. So you said, I think it's it was a interesting. There you go. Interesting to uh, the Terry, uh, an extensive indoor bowls background, and it's amazing the number of players who come from the indoor game and and go out, or vice versa. But uh, the number of players who do start their journey on the bowls game, playing the little indoor game on the mats with the small bowls. The big thing that I love about people who come from the indoor game to the outdoor game, they know the concept of taking green uh, already. You know, the fact that the bowl does turn and, and you have to take the green, you have to throw the bowl out there and let it come back. And so most indoor bowlers, when they take the outdoor game up, are pretty quickly into their work as far as that part of the game is concerned. And it, it's good to see. And the other part are very, very good at is reading the heads. Uh, which shots to play because once again the little bowls on the on the carpets indoor the heads are quite compact you have to really look at all sorts of angles and etc etc to decide what shot you're going to play as we see a very very good bowl here from lovely Perry. shot what a rip at it yeah, absolutely, Dave. I mean, I'll declare my bias if, we, if we'll excuse the pun, <laughs> uh, but I play I play a lot of indoor bowls myself. It's um, how I started the sport. Complementary games, in my opinion, outdoor and indoor. Outdoor largely a summer sport, indoor largely a winter sport. So, you know, if you want to play bowls, you can do it all year round. And they, yeah, complementary games, I enjoy them both. And um, just, uh, again, another sport with that community. Both forms of bowls. It's about the community, isn't it? You know, it's just uh, you get friends for life and all over the country as well. The world in some cases. Absolutely, Absolutely yes. The friendships that you make in the sport, it's incredible. And you keep bumping into the same people year after year as we see the second end about to get underway. And I think it was here and here was it? Well, I think it might have been... Two. Oh, it's just the one on the board I see, well, so maybe it we'll, was only one. Four we'll call it, it two. Yeah, we'll call it one and a half and wait for confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you go back to national polls, you on national events, and or you, you turn up at um, some of the excellent tournaments that various clubs hold, hold around the country and you run into guys that you haven't seen for a number of years and you renew the friendships and um, yeah, as you mentioned even right around the world obviously the, the top players become awesome friends I know Joe's got some fantastic friends all around the world um, so it, it's um, it, it really is an awesome sport in that regard yeah, yeah, I could make nice. lyrical, lyrical, lyrical all day about it, um, uh, Dave, just the community we have, and I think we saw it, I mean, the world, we've just emerged from this um, uh, a global pandemic, and during COVID, the bowling club's community, or the bowling community, was just absolutely amazing. We had clubs and centres um, starting uh, phone trees where they would regularly uh, call each other. Um, uh, clubs and centres ran quizzes and competitions to keep people entertained, made sure that the community remained uh, connected, and then upon returning um, uh, from COVID, the the way that the community just sort of got itself up off its feet, the clubs and uh, people and 
uh, centres that needed help got the help. It was just inspiring, really, Dave, and just uh, quite proud to be to be a part of the community and would welcome anyone in. Absolutely. I see it was two on that first end. Yes, yeah, so one and a half has been upgraded to two, to two there, so a good start from Terry and Jenny. And once again, we've got a little bit of a loose head uh, here to start with. Morris looks like this might be the shot. Yep, that'll be the shot. And uh, nothing extremely close. And it that would be four, fair to say. Yeah. Let's Interesting, the forehand side, so the right as we see it, it looks almost like it's a bit blocked up, Dave. Do we think we'll see the bowls come down on the left side of the screen, the backhand side? I think they, it depends on which hand they favour. I mean, I don't really think that bowl on the forehand is in the way. Uh, so if you're confident playing that hand, then stay with it. Uh, that bowl won't be in your way. You'll be able to get draw around that quite comfortably. So whichever hand you're favouring at the moment, stick with it. And Jenny knew the moment she let that one go. You saw the little shake of the head. That perfect or pretty good line as we've spoken about. The players are getting the green right, but just finding the weight, the speed that you have to roll the ball along the surface that seems to be the challenge tonight. Yep. This one's going to run through quite a bit too. Yeah, so yeah, the speed is definitely the issue for the players. Jenny Stockford again, making a, looking to make a correction. She was short with her first bowl, looking to correct with her second. This is a reasonable correction here. Did it stop in time to get the shot? Oh, I saw some people clap, so I think it must have. We'll find out in a second. Good line. Oh, is it going to get there? Oh. So it looks like that'll count. So I think it's two to Morris and Briar at the moment. So this is an important bowl here for Jenny. Still plenty of room. Oh. oh she screwed a note again at this one. She's not 100% happy. How's the weight, Jenny? Needs it to keep running. Needs it to keep running. Go, she says. Oh. Well, she didn't waste any oh. weight if she has drawn the shot. Very close. That could be the shot. So Morris is just looking at the head and deciding what he wants Briar to do. Briar saying forehand. Morris saying we've got one on this side. That's very clear directions there. Draw that, you'll be in the count. So he says we're holding one. Get to my foot, we'll have, to have two. Last ball of the second end. So I think she's made it. And that's a ripper. Oh, it just didn't pull up in time. Right. Oh, one and a half, she says. So we'll get Sue Rossiter out to measure. Measure for the shot, this is. Yeah, measure those two bowls up the top there. She's going to measure those. Horace was pretty confident that he had the <laughs> shot. Let's see what his eyes like. Yeah. That's the question. I've got no idea. I would favour, from this camera angle, to be honest, it looks like that white bowl that sits at 2 o'clock to the jack is the shot, but that might not be. Looks like it's the black one. Yep, it's right the black there. one. So Morris and Briar on the, on the board after the second end. They'll be happy with that, but they'll be wanting to um, just, just tighten things up a little bit. One, two... And this final from night two, as we see the the golden retriever in action there, very well controlled by Phil. Beautiful. It's going to be. I mean, this is night two, and we've got ten more nights to go. The mind boggles at how effective that's going to be by then, Dave. Golden retriever pushes are going to get fit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad it's not me. It's much easier just to sit behind a microphone. This bowl, a lot of bowls. 
I'm not sure. That's we haven't good. really seen a hand favoured, have we? So often in bowls we talk about like the favoured, the favoured side. This rank seems to be sort of 50-50, would you say, Dave? Yeah, the players haven't sort of favoured one hand or the other. Uh, Briar tended to play the forehand in the first game, and I thought she was pretty pretty good. So I'm pleased to see her back on that forehand side, and she's drawn the shot here. And Jenny played that absolute bomb that we remember from their first game, also on the forehand. So not, it looks to be maybe the more favoured side, but... Uh, it's an individual choice, whichever hand you feel comfortable on, the backhand or the forehand. Look at this. How's the weight from Briar? Oh, just a little bit short. So we see Jenny Stockford on the backhand. So she's switched. That'll be because she felt like that black bowl that she's about to hit, ironically. She would have felt like that was in the road. It's funny, um, talking to Terry and Jenny before before the uh, the night started, so their mother and daughter, obviously, um, they hadn't actually played, they said, we haven't actually played a lot of bowls together. <laughs> they've been playing bowls adjacent to each other for a very long time, but this is the first time they've ever played outdoor pairs together. So how cool is that to debut as a, as a pairs combination, mother and daughter, on TV on a televised event? That's amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. You would have thought that they would have um, played some club championship pairs Surely. or something like <laughs> yeah. that together by now, but yeah, making your debut as a pair on TV. Might be Brilliant. the start of a might be, might be the start of a good thing, Dave. Look at this here from Jenny Stockford around all the bowls. That's a good second shot. See the crowd looking on. So we've got a better looking head here. The bowls are a lot closer to the jack this time, and it's uh, one black at the moment. And that's uh, Briar's bowl. Make their way down to the head. Right, decisions here for Morris Symes. He's been playing for only 53 years. This is his 54th season of outdoor bowls. And that time has represented his country, won national titles, continues to play at the top level, just underneath the line there. And may I say, Dave, if... Uh, we talk about deliveries, and Morris is another one. His delivery hasn't really changed. Comes out pretty good. No. Comes out very good. And, and actually, with all four deliveries in this uh, of these players, it's pretty good. Very, very good. Rhythmical timing. Body weight transfer going forward to get a little bit of body weight behind the bowl. See Morris here looking down the line that he wishes to send the bowl down. Keep your eye focused on your target down the green that you want to aim the bowl at. You know that target is going to bring the bowl back to the centre line, centre of the green. Mm. Just underdone the grass a little bit here. Beautiful speed. He just under, underdid his line a little bit. Yeah, so a chance here for Terry. But it's interesting, isn't it, Dave? Like, even if you're just looking to play one of the hundreds of Twilight Bowls leagues uh, that are around the, the country in the evening during the summer, it is handy if you're just a couple of the basic pointers for delivery. So for, for the benefit of those who are tuning in and might just play their local club's business house to Twilight Bowls League, what's, what's the main easy fix for a delivery that you've come across? Well, definitely, there's two or three things that, that I really encourage people to really work on alignment on the mat so people tend beginners tend to stand on the mat facing straight down the middle of the rink and then they, they but what you've got to obviously the bowl turns so but we want to send it down a straight line and just forget the fact that it turns let the bowl turn on its own accord so make sure your alignment on the mat is aiming in the direction that you want to send the bowl so your hips and shoulders are aiming straight where you want the bowl to go Morris with weight oh sorry Dave I was just getting a bit excited nothing's changed nothing's changed as you were so that's the first thing and then it's just straight lines after that nice see see how Terry here is aiming 
where she wants to send the bowl and then it's just straight lines. A nice straight back swing, straight back, straight through, pendulum swing, follow through, straight down the line that you want to send the bowl and then the bowl will do the turning for you as you can see here. She's and close, she's close. Bowl. Oh, what a shot what from a Terry break. Blackburn. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Awesome, awesome bowl. Brilliant. Oh, we'll see. So we're going to use Sue Rossiter again to the side. So def definitely yes. one it is, and now they're measuring for the second shot. Beautiful bowl there from Terry Blackbourne on this second night of the Twilight Bowls League. There's the the measure, the box measure. Pretty much stayed, I mean, the measure's... We've had some innovations over the years. We now have laser measures and all that sort of stuff, but the measures pretty much stayed the same forever. As we see, I think that was one one to Terry and Jenny because she indicated that black was the second shot. Yep. So 3-1 now. <laughs> 3-1, two ends to go. Getting down to the nitty-gritty. Is it going to be the girls... The girls' combination two nights in a row, remembering that uh, Amy McElroy and Kirsten Edwards took the uh, took the money last night. Yes. In our first night. And so it could be another all-ladies combination takes takes the money tonight as well. That's what John was saying at the, at, the, uh, at the top of the show, and you wouldn't want to bet against it, Dave. 3-1, so two the difference. Very focused, steely determination. Terry Blackbourne. Of course, uh, she's from a bowls family as well, so her mum, Jenny, plays, but her husband represents New Zealand in indoor bowls. Sean, hello, Sean. And her sons, uh, Lockie and Tyler, have had a go at uh, indoor and have aspirations to follow their mum into the outdoor game as well. So if you're watching, uh, hi, guys. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure they'll be getting quite excited to see uh, Terry and Jenny go so well on this first night. 3-1 up after three ends. Can be super proud of Mum with what she's already achieved in the outdoor game, winning a world title uh, just a few months ago on the Gold Coast, representing New Zealand team in the para division of the world champs. And uh, playing some pretty good stuff tonight as well, especially that last ball on the last end. Yeah, just timing, isn't it? You know, you don't have to play magic bowls all the time, but if you can play good bowls at the right moments, it can just make such a difference in this game. It's funny, in the in the pairs game, quite often people refer to it as a leads game, very much set up by the leads, and I tend to agree with that. It's a, it's a leads game, and so... Beautiful um, bowl from Morris Symes. What, what a great bowl that is. Superb shot. There's a throwing in the... In, in the bowls fraternity that uh, the pairs game is won by the leads and the skips decide by how many mm. and that's quite a, not a bad way to think about it either because the leads if they can get dominate their opponent and set things up for their skips then the skips can add the finishing touches and add shots and and yeah so not a bad analogy that one but i absolutely agree particularly this uh Three bowl pierce game or six bowl pierce game that we play a lot of in New Zealand. Although this one, of course, slightly changed with the alternate play. So the players get to play both skip hand and lead effectively. And on the crossover, Jenny Stockford with a lot to do. She's three down. So important that she plays a good first bowl here, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, look, she's. Yeah, yep, absolutely. It's. She's got to get there. Make sure she gets her first bowl up. It's always, always find. Most people find that if you if you arrive with your first bowl, get that good feel with your first bowl of being there. And then if you do happen to be a little bit heavy, just the adjustment to take some speed off tends to be a little bit easier than trying to add it. Oh, she's easily just dropped short. Yeah, pressure going on. Is she going to have to pull another one of those bombs out? Yeah. <laughs> That's the question. That's the question. 
certainly Briar will be thinking, look, if I can if I can hold four, what she's done here, Briar Atkinson, this is a beautiful bowl. Great shot. Sitting with four now. All the pressure in the world on Jenny Stockford's shoulders. Mum and daughter playing for the first time. Really needs to make sure she's up with this one. Close here, Jenny Stockford, she's close as another bomb! What a bowl! She has just, well, I mean, when they've needed to be pulled out of the bag, Jenny has just reached in and found it every time, Dave. Absolutely fantastic bowl, that one. Second shot, four down she was. Played with very good speed, could land either of the bowls up there. Great second shot, very, very well played. Great stuff. She rescued the situation in, her, in their first game and uh, went four down and she's done it again here. Subtle differences that she actually got the shot in the first game, whereas this time she's got second shot. That's staggering. Like, if you put yourself into Morris and Briar's shoes, they've got five of the six closest bowls and they're only holding one, and you think to yourself, what more? What more do I need to do here to score a multiple number? Can be a little bit frustrating sometimes. Can be. Briar looking to make it too. She's close here. This could be absolute bowls genius. Oh, not quite. I don't think it's quite made it. They're clapping, but I'm not sure if it was two. I don't think it was two, Dave. Let's have a look and see what the verdict is, but... The good news is we, that was a much better head. The quality of bowls on that head was outstanding. All four players contributed to a very, very good end there. Especially Jenny cutting that, that uh, what looked like a possibility of a big number, cutting it back to, and we're still waiting for confirmation whether it was just the one or whether it was two. Oh, we'll call sure it one and a half. Is. We'll call it one and a half again. Just, just the one it was. So we're on the final end, Dave. Three, two. How do you think the players will be feeling? Well, I think they'll all be feeling a little bit better after that last end because they did play some much better bowls. And so they should all be reasonably confident of when they step onto the mat that they know what the speed and the line is now. And so um, we're in for an exciting finish to this game. Certainly, certainly will be. We've seen it all tonight. We've seen... Loose heads and tight heads and good bowls and back, bad bowls and happy people and sad people in between. It's got it all. And, I mean, uh, I asked for a tie break yesterday, Dave, and I didn't get one. But 3-2 the difference. Morris and Briar score one. We go to a tie break on the second night of the Twilight Bowls League. What are the chances? Pretty high, I'd say. Pretty high. Yes. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing I will say is that Terry is going to have the last bowl of the match. Uh, well, last bowl of this end. Mm. It might not be the last bowl of the match, but she will have last bowl on this end. So if they're down, she's uh, going to have the last say in the match, which could be crucial. Yeah, I think uh, we'll think back to that in the not-too-distant future. <laughs> Morris, you're saying, just draw into my foot, please, as we see Ro Sue Rossiter there indicate one to the black bowls I mean of course if you like the look of the logos on the on the athletes uh, hats and shirts you can buy some branded apparel on the Bowls New Zealand shop which you can find at bowlsnewzealand.co.nz along with some lovely bowls cloths and bowls bags etc etc it's a, a good place to go have a look I mean Apparently, according to the supermarkets, Dave, it's Christmas time, so maybe you could go and do your Christmas shopping. A good place to, to go over nosy for that. Christmas already, we Oh, unbelievable, isn't it? We're already it talking is. it. I, okay. I always find myself infuriated in a supermarket when I see the first uh, Christmas mince pies in October. I go, well, I love a Christmas mince pie, but I'm, I'm not accepting that it's Christmas time yet, guys. You need to calm down. Anyway, back to the bowls, Dave. And look, we had a brilliant head last time, but this time we've uh, we've started off a little bit loose. Maybe a nerves have crept in for the two leads. 
it is the last end, well, potentially the last end here, so a chance of there only being six bowls left in tonight's Twilight Bowls League. We're watching the final here. Morris and Briar, coach and coachee, and Terry and Jenny, mother and daughter. And the weight of the world on their shoulders. How far is he running? Has he oh, got the length? I think oh, he's, he's fallen short. short. The little oh. purse in the lips there. What does that mean? Does she like it or not? Well, she, she means she doesn't want to hit that ball. Oh, that's a nightmare. Oh, dear. <laughs> Morris looks gutted about it. Oh, dearie me. Big helping hand there for <laughs> Morris. Got a pretty close shot now. He'd be looking to really put the pressure on Terry by adding another one here. On the forehand, that groove delivery, it's been the same forever. There is a, um, a video somewhere, Dave, of Morris Symes playing a, at the Carpety Bowling Club in an invitation singles tournament about 300 years ago, and his delivery looks exactly the same, and the hair looks pretty much the same as well. <laughs> so indicating so the game down. Game at the moment, Terry's got two bowls that come still, this one and one more. Well, she'll be looking to get second shot as her first priority. Get second shot with this bowl, and then they can make a decision as to what they do with the last oh, one. Oh dear. Has she made it into second? Needs it to stop. Well, I think we're going to see a tie break end here, Dave. And if we think back to about a minute and a half ago, you said, well, Terry Blackburn is going to get last bowl of the end, and that might be crucial. And I think you were absolutely correct. Could already be two to Morris and Briar. So it's hard to tell who's got second shot here. Yeah, I think I just two, two down, she says. There you go. So this is to All save right. the match here. This is to, at a minimum, you want to force an extra end. Huge bowl here from Terry Blackbourne to the side. Whether we go to an extra end, whether Terry and Jenny win, the mums win, whether Morris and Briar win, what's going to happen? What's going to happen here? Look at this bowl. Oh, she's done it! She's done it! What a finish! Unbelievable. She was a little bit lucky. Got the feather off of the bowl out on the wing there, but she had beautiful speed. And she was really only looking for second shot. She got the shot to win it, to win the game. I did mention early that she was going to have last bowl, yep. and that could have a big bearing on the game, and so it proved. Absolute psychic. That you, I think you. it's almost like you've been around the bowl scene for a while, Dave. That last bowl, what a shot that was from Terry, and congratulations to tonight's Twilight Bowls winner, Terry Blackburn and Jenny Stockford. What a night of bowls it's been, Dave. What are your thoughts? It's the second night. Brilliant, brilliant, thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, that bowl of Jenny's in the first game will live in my memory for a very long time. It yeah. was fantastic, as will the last bowl of that match we've just watched. Great stuff. So we're going to throw shortly to John Macbeth for a post-match interview with uh, Jenny Stockford and Terry Blackburn. They're tonight's Twilight Bowls League winners. And we look forward uh, to hearing from them shortly. Of course, we've got five more weeks of this, so if you've enjoyed the last two nights, every Tuesday and Wednesday night from 6.30pm, the Twilight Bowls League is live on Sky Sport. If you want to come down and watch it uh, live, live, you can do so. The Royal Oak Bowls or Bowls Royal Oak has a special menu on, food and drink available. So why would you not come down 6.30 every Tuesday and Wednesday? And we're going to cross now and see uh, the winners of tonight's Twilight Bowls League, Terry and Jenny. Well done. 
Well, I could hear your collective groans from here when that last bowl went up from Terry and uh, it snuck in for the shot. But that's bowls and it was a fantastic finish. And again, as I mentioned before, the women dominated the first night and they dominate again tonight. Tell us about that last shot and how pleased you were with it and how much apologising you did. Yeah, pleased. I don't know, I was probably a bit embarrassed. But um, at the same time, I knew that I wanted to be wider than I was with my second one yeah. and obviously wanted to give it a chance. I had been falling short a lot all game, so it was more just about giving it a chance. And yeah, we did get lucky, obviously, but um, hey, we'll oh. take it. Yeah, a proud mum, eh? She played very well. You team up well together too, I think, don't you, Jenny? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's pretty forgiving when I play my bowls all over the place but <laughs> <laughs> I try them on occasionally. I don't think there was much of that in fact the <laughs> others that were watching were saying here she goes again Jenny's last bowl this will be a great one. <laughs> uh, here we are here's the trophy which you hang on to for tonight at least as the winners <laughs> of the second event our second day of competition. I do hope you've enjoyed yourselves uh, you've, you've sm played with smiles on your faces. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, no, it is enjoyable. Obviously, it's a bit nervy, but yeah, we're yeah, happy great. to be here. Oh, that's brilliant. All right, congratulations to our winners on this night. We've had uh, women the first night, women the second, and these are our champions tonight, Terry and Jenny, mother and daughter combination. So that's uh, night two of the Twilight Bowls League, and we will be back to, on next Tuesday. Remember, it's six weeks of competition. Next Tuesday and Wednesday night, we'll be back for more live action from this wonderful complex here at Royal Oak. I hope you can join us there. Good night.